In today's video, I'm going to give you guys five tips to help you out as a new reseller. And we're starting right now. What's going on, everybody? My name is Marcus. Welcome back to another video. So on this channel, I make reselling content. And I try to give you guys some tips some value and uh, show you guys how you can be a better reseller. Um, in this video, I'm going to give you guys some tips that I wish I had known when I first started out with reselling. Because it probably would have helped me out a lot more to be more successful at a quicker rate. And uh, not make as many mistakes. What makes you qualified to give me any type of reseller advice? Well, I'm glad you asked that. So, as of May 7th, my Dixon's Pickens account on eBay reached 90 days old. And in those 90 days, I grossed over $10,000. That doesn't make me qualified in the grand scheme of things to tell you how to make money on eBay. But it does allow me to show you some of the tips that I use to gross that $10,000 in those 90 days. So let's start it off with tip number one. So tip number one is to do your research. YouTube's full of video after video after video of resellers showing what they sold and, uh, you know, things that you need to be on the lookout for with bolos is what we call them. So, uh. For me, when I started out, I watched hours upon hours of YouTube videos of uh, everyone from Harry Tornado, Hustling Hooks, um, Matt Part-Time Picker, Commonwealth Picker, Dante from Prison to Profit. Everyone is showing you what they sell, you know what I mean? So there's no real reason for you to not have at least a few items in your reseller Rolodex to know what to be on the lookout for. And... Um, when I first started out, I would just grab things at the thrift store, you know, and uh, look what people were selling them for, which is not always the way to do it. Don't look at what someone's selling things for. Rather, you need to look at what they have sold for because the item is only worth what someone is willing to pay for it. So just because you have an item that someone's got listed for a lot of money. Perfect example. I picked up a Beauty and the Beast clamshell VHS tape from the Goodwill bins, brand new. Uh, I looked it up. People were asking $9,000, $5,000, $6,000 for this thing. But what it's selling for is between $4.99 and $9.99. So just because someone's asking these astronomical prices doesn't mean that you're gonna get these astronomical prices for things. So what you need to do is you need to do your research. Find out what items are selling fast and learn what the sell through rate is. Now for me, I just simplify it down to this. Say there's a hundred of these items listed, but there's 1,000 of these items sold. That means this item's got a ridiculous sell through rate and I'm gonna buy it. If the item has 100 listed and 100 sold, that's a 100% sell through rate. So for me, that's great. I'm gonna buy that item. If an item has 100 listed and only 50 sold, that might be an item that you're gonna sit on for a little while and you need to consider if you got the space and the capital to wait for that item to sell. You don't wanna make this investment if you need your money back immediately. If you need your money back immediately, you need to go for the quick flips, things that are gonna sell within a day to a week to a month even. You know, uh, you don't wanna be sitting on an item for six months when you need that $20 investment back if that's how much you spent, so to speak. So you need to know what's gonna sell and how fast it'll sell. And if you can wait for that item to sell for a little bit longer for more profit, then go for it. For me, when I started out, I started out as a sneaker reseller selling hype sneakers, Jordans and, you know, Yeezys and things like that. And uh, I didn't have no idea what hard goods even meant, nonetheless, where to get them, you know. So um, I started out, I live in a very small town and I was sourcing these hype sneakers online through the Nike sneakers app or just buying them on, you know, Facebook marketplace groups. And uh, sometimes I get ripped off. I got ripped off on Facebook. I got ripped off on Macari. Uh, and you know, by the time I got ripped off, you know, three or four times, I got real fed up with, uh, taking risks, especially with multi, you know, a hundred dollar, you know, sneakers, these sneakers are not cheap. And then I'm getting ripped off for it. Now my money, my investments tied up in return, uh, cases and things like that. So I started going to thrift stores and looking up items and, you know, 
buying them after seeing a few Harry Tornado videos, a few uh, Taco Stacks videos, and just, you know, guys that are going out, you know, thrifting. Paul Cantu was really one of the people that got me into thrifting clothes and uh, looking for vintage items and things like that, which I still don't find all that often. And I really don't like selling clothes. And if you don't like selling something, you're not going to enjoy what you do, so you're not going to do it that often. Although I have gotten past the um, initial phase of not enjoying selling clothes, I do it because some of them sell well and it's a necessity. So I do what I know I'm going to sell. I use the I use the philosophy that if I've sold it once, I can sell it again. Things like these Carhartt pants that I have that I've been selling, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, those things sell well and I will source them every time I see them. I will pick them up. Uh, which brings me to my second tip. Sourcing good inventory. You guys don't want to source horrible inventory. Let's say handkerchiefs, for instance. You get these embroidered handkerchiefs that has people's initials on them, and nobody's in the market for used handkerchiefs with other people's initials on them, but you find a bunch of them, and you happen to like handkerchiefs. That's probably not going to be a good investment. Case in point, I found a vintage Carhartt jacket at the Goodwill Benz. I even put it in a video recently, maybe a couple months ago. This Carhartt jacket would have sold a long time ago if it didn't have this guy Brian's name embroidered on the chest. Now, I went ahead and picked it up because I feel like at some point in time, it probably will sell for the right price, but I've been sitting on it for a couple of months now. Now, just because it's a vintage Carhartt jacket does not mean that you should pick it up if it's got somebody's name embroidered on it. So that's just an example. Um, another example, Pokemon cards. They're flying off the shelves right now. They're trending items. Um, you can sell a brand new box of unopened Pokemon cards within five minutes of listing it. I've done it before. So um, those are items you want to be on the lookout for. Jordans. Jordans are selling ridiculously higher than retail prices. When you buy those, they're going to sell for a good profit. Um, depending on which silhouette you get, Jordan 1, 4, um, 13 sometimes, uh, 5s, you know, 6s. Those Jordans are going to sell really well, especially Jordan 1s. That's just a really hot silhouette. People are really looking for it, and the bots buy them all up. So if you can get your hands on some Jordans uh, at a good price, you'll be able to flip them for a good uh, profit. Case in point, I got nine pairs of Jordans for $40 a piece from the Goodwill. I sold them all, and I my initial investment, $40 on nine pairs of Jordans, I made $900 profit off that investment. And it only took me about two months to sell each pair. Um, that's not a bad investment in my opinion, and it's a great return. So, you know, you just got to know what to look out for. You got to source items that are in demand, and you got to know when the trending items aren't trending anymore. Like, uh, for instance, wrestling vintage tees are really popular right now people are looking for them they're real sought after after stone cold did his documentary um just like last year racing tees were really really popular not to say that you're not going to still be able to get a good return on a racing tee that you buy but vintage is really popping in the wrestling category right now so that's just an example of what i mean by saying sourcing good inventory the third tip that i got for you guys is to list consistently and what I mean by list consistently is pick a number of listings that you can do every day with no problem and do it every single day Chris from daily refinement says that if you list 10 items a day by the end of a month or so maybe a little bit longer you'll be selling 10 items a day hustling hook says you'll sell 1% of your total inventory daily so that means if you have a thousand items you'll sell what what is that 10 items a day or something yeah it's 10 stupid that's just a rough estimate because i got under 200 items on one account and i got under 200 items on another account and i sell about five to six items a day so um i try to list no less than five items a day but right now chris from flip the world has a challenge going on where He's challenging resellers to list 10 a day in May. Hashtag 10 a day in May. If you guys want to get with it, post your 10 listings with the hashtag 10 a day in May. 
and uh, post, post it on Instagram. And you want to get in the habit of listing consistently. If you're not listing, you're not selling. That's the bottom line, guys. eBay has an algorithm that favors people that list daily, that are active daily, and have activity on their accounts daily. Now, if you can't find 10 items to list or you're just donating, you don't have the capital to list 10 items daily, say your items are going to run its course and they relist every month, every 30 days, your items relist. If you come to the point where you're getting ready to relist an item in the listing and hit sell similar, keep the pictures or either take better pictures and uh, either leave the price what it's at, change the price by a couple of dollars, and then Hit sell similar, and that'll be a brand new listing, but it'll be the same item. That's just a little tip that works really well for me. Um, try it, guys, and let me know in the comment section if it works well for you. Because I wish somebody would have told me this trick a lot sooner. If you're not listing, you're not selling. So, therefore, you need to list consistently to have consistent sales. So, that brings me to tip four. Tip four is organization. Being organized probably doesn't seem like it would be that big of a deal, but trust me guys, having an organization system in place is going to save you a lot of hassle and a lot of headache down the line. So say for instance, you list this hat, right? And you put it somewhere and you forget about it. You don't inventory it as soon as you get done listing it and you just let it sit somewhere and it gets lost and maybe even gets put back into your death pile. Now you make the sale for this item and you can't find it. You, you got to do a refund on this item for an item lost or broken. Now this option right here dings your account. eBay doesn't like when you can't fulfill an order because that's what they're there for. They're there for you to make orders and make them their money essentially. So if you take away from them making money, they're not going to show you favor anymore. Now that doesn't mean that you can't get it back, but you know when you do these things and it hurts your account, you get pushed down in the in the in the system. You know what I mean? They show favor to people that make them the most money as often as possible. So when you're giving refunds for things that are your fault or when you're canceling orders because you can't find the item or it's broken, that's gonna hurt your account, guys. But when you have to cancel an order for something that is totally your fault, it's not a good thing. One of my tips that I can offer you guys is to start out small, start with a bin system. I started out getting three dollar totes from the goodwill whenever i find them you know find them with lids you know what i mean and i'd clean them out and i'd use them to store my inventory on and i just put a letter of the alphabet on there this is a bin this is b bin this is c bin you know what i mean and i'd start just stacking up bins and i stack them high and i fill them with as much inventory as i could and um that's just how i do it right now i have a storage facility that i store all my stuff in it's in the same parking lot of the building that i live in uh, so I don't have to go far and I just store all my inventory in there and I use the custom SKU option uh, on my eBay and I just put the, the bin that it's in in my custom SKU option so when I sell something I know where it's at and I can go find it quickly. Um, now when I get bigger and I get more space I'll get shelves on casters that I can slide back and forth and I can move around like Cincinnati Picker does um, and I'll be able to store more inventory and less space and it'll be easier to maneuver instead of me having to move each individual tote to grab the tote that's underneath it that has the item in it that I need. So those are just a few tips on being organized. You know, you just want to know where all your stuff is. You want to be able to access it quickly and you want to be able to spend as least time searching for stuff as, it, as you can when it's time to pack your orders up. Nobody wants to search for items for 20 minutes just to find one item because they don't know which tote they put it in so they got to look through all their totes that's not an organized way to do things and that's going to waste a lot of time which is time is money in this reselling industry so you guys want to be able to use it as wisely as you can being organized also means using your space wisely so i live in a one bedroom apartment with my girlfriend we both resell we both use this space uh we got a one bedroom to store our unlisted inventory and so we both have death piles in our bedroom we do our packing in our bedroom and we do our listing in the living room now we have this light box that we take photos with because in the beginning we used to take photos on the floor I don't like being on the floor trying to take pictures and I gotta lay flat to take certain pictures of 
take pictures at different angles of items. Uh, I had a sheet coming off of one end, end of my coffee table laying onto the floor so I'd have a white background behind my items that I was taking pictures of and it just became to be a, a very unpleasant part of the process. I would either take pictures on my coffee table which is wooden and have that as the background or I would take pictures on my coffee table but in the background you could see my dishwasher you could see my kitchen sink or you could see my dog you know things like that that's not professional when you're trying to have a professional looking ebay account you want your listings to look as professional as you can like amazon or somewhere like that so i ended up buying a light box and this light box has done me wonders but my setup i don't have a whole bedroom to where I can, you know, set up a uh, listing station that's going to just be permanently set up. You know what I mean? So for me, I get a light box. I use this light box. When I'm done with it, I put it on the floor behind my couch and it's out of the way. You know what I mean? Uh, that's just how I keep things organized. Um, I got a tote full of my boxes um, for my packing supplies and my office supplies and everything is on a shelf out of the way in the bedroom. So you just got to keep things as organized as you can in the space that you have to utilize it the best way that you possibly can. So tip number five, this is going to be um, the final tip for this video. And if you guys are liking this content, don't forget to leave a like down below. So I know that this is the type of content you guys like, and I can make another five tips for new resellers. So tip number five is going to be bookkeeping. Now this is a very vital, very important, step of being a reseller but it's not fun at all i'm just doing it the old-fashioned way at the moment i write everything down in a notebook and i just use a calculator and i subtract i subtract my cost of goods my ebay fees my shipping fees and everything i do it on pen and paper now i'll eventually install some type of software or but right now my sales are at a point to where i can keep up with it with a pen and paper and it doesn't take me too incredibly long then you know when i get to doing something to where the numbers are just too much for me to handle that's when i'll invest in some uh software so you gotta know what you're spending you can't say that you gross twenty thousand dollars and that you net it twenty thousand dollars if you gross twenty thousand dollars you have to take your shipping out your cost of goods out you have to take out your ebay fees uh your packing materials and all that you have to take that away from it so in the end you probably only really made 10k but you need to know that and you need to be able to have that documentation of that so when it comes down to doing your taxes you know what your business expenses are you know what your cost of goods expenses are you know what your gas expenses are your business supplies are for instance i just bought a rollo two two weeks ago and uh i spent about 200 dollars on a rollo uh, and 500 labels, right? So that's a tax. Uh, that's a tax business expense. I can get a deduction for that on my taxes. Um, I buy packing supplies, um, tape, all that stuff. Um, everything can be deducted from my taxes at the end of the year. Driving to the post office, that's a tax expense. Uh, I have a mileage tracker from QuickBooks and two QuickBooks on my phone. It tracks my mileage from so when I'm sourcing or when I'm driving from Cape Girardeau, Missouri to St. Louis, Missouri to go to the Goodwill Bins, that's a hundred something miles right there that is getting deducted from my expenses. So at the end of the year, I can write that off. Uh, like I said, I work out of my one bedroom apartment. That's a tax write off at the end of the year that I can take these deductions out. Some of the space that I use exclusively for working can be written off. My cleaning supplies, everything that I use from my brushes that I clean shoes with, uh, the shoe cleaner, the uh, wipes that I use to, to wipe down my products with the hard goods and everything that I use when I'm cleaning my inventory during processing, all that is a tax write-off. So, this roll of craft paper from Supply Hut, those bubble mailers, these lint rollers, poly mailers my thank you cards this is 500 thank you cards if i can get the case open 500 thank you cards that cost me 120 dollars the shoe trees were a gift from chris from flip the world those didn't cost anything but these shirt uh poly mailers these actual bubble or poly mailers 
two different sizes. These bubble mailers were free from the US, po US Post Service. But this tape expenser, dispenser, shout out to Commonwealth Picker. I used his link to buy this on Amazon for like 14 bucks. This box cutter, these scissors, these tape dispensers, the tape, the printer even, you know, the ink that I use on the printer is all a tax write-off. It's all a business expense. And that's why you need to get a, don't listen to me, get a uh, CPA. They'll tell you everything and things that you never even imagined that you could write off as an expense. They'll help you out with that. My storage building, that's an expense. That's a business expense. I only use that to store my inventory with. Uh, it's not storing anything else but inventory. That's a business expense. Um, my Dixon's Pickens merchandise, this is a business expense. You know what I mean? This is my work shirt. I wear this as a work shirt. This isn't for fun. You know what I mean? Although it's a great looking shirt and you guys can purchase one of these if you go to Full Cart Merch on Etsy or just follow the link in my Instagram bio. Um, you guys can purchase one of these if you want to show some support to your boy. Wink, wink. Um, other than that though, man, that's pretty much uh, all the tips I got for you guys. If you guys did find any value out of this video, please leave a thumbs up or a comment down below. Let me know if you guys would like me to make another video with five different tips for beginner resellers. You know, I'm just trying to spread as much value as I can and help as many new resellers make some money starting out uh, as fast as possible because I wish that I would have had somebody to help, not necessarily hold my hand, but help me through this process uh, in the beginning. I got a ton of value from plenty of YouTubers out there and I'm just trying to pay it forward with kind of a, a summary of uh, all the tips that I learned because there's a bunch of them from all the different people out there and I'm just trying to wrap it up in a nice little package and give back to you guys so that way I can help you guys on your reseller journey. So if this is the type of content you guys like, consider hitting the subscribe button so you guys will get notified when I drop more videos. If not, just leave a like on this video, and when I make new content, it'll pop up on your home screen. You don't even have to subscribe. That's pretty much it, guys. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Until then, let's make this cash, guys. Peace.